Okay, so we are back for part two of our derivatives of the exponential and logarithmic functions. We're still on our packet that we used yesterday when we were just taking down these formulas and doing the examples and the homework. Today in this video we're going to focus on the second page of this packet which is, I'm sorry, not the second page, the third page of this packet which is the y. You guys know I'm big on y. So y is the derivative of e to the x, e to the x. y is the derivative of ln of x, 1 over x, etc. So I picked four really basic equations where the u in the formula is just an x. So we're going to start by proving why the derivative of e to the x is what it is. So let's start by just using the shortcut. If I use formula number one from yesterday, the derivative of e to the u, again this would be my u, uh, the derivative would be dy dx equals e to the u times derivative of u, which is just e to the x. But why? Why is the derivative of e to the x itself? Okay, we're going to go way back to the beginning of chapter 3 with this formula. We're going to reintroduce slope of the tangent line at the point x f of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Using this formula we are going to plug in our function. So if f of x is e to the x, then f of x plus h is e to the x plus h minus f of x, which is just e to the x. This is still all over h. Next, I'm going to use Algebra 1 exponent rules to separate e to the x plus h into e to the x times e to the h. And the reason I can do that is if I wanted to multiply e to the x times e to the h, I would just add my exponents, which would get me right back here. So here I am, and now my next step is going to be to factor out an e to the x. This leaves me with e to the h minus 1 all over h. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is use my TI-84 to evaluate the limit as h approaches 0 of this portion of my problem right here. Just the e to the h minus 1 over h because this over here has the variable involved here. I know if I try to plug 0 in for h on this, it's just going to be itself e to the x. So I'm curious, as h approaches 0 on this part of my limit, what's happening to this part of my limit? So I'm going to switch over here to my TI-84. I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to press y equals, and you can see I've typed in e to the x minus 1 all over x. Now that's going to seem weird because they really should be h's, but since the calculator is programmed for x, we're just going to pretend that those x's are h's, and we're just going to let x approach 0 like h would approach 0. Okay, now I'm going to go to my table set. I'm going to press second window, and I want to approach 0. So I'm going to start just a little bit to the left of 0 at negative 0.01. And I want the change in my table to step just slightly towards zero. So I'm going to leave that set at 0 0.001. And then I want to go to my table. So I'm going to press second graph, which will take me to my table. Now we know that limits find y values. And if I come down, as my x values are approaching zero from the left, you can see that my y values are increasing slightly until I get to zero. Now at zero I have an error which means undefined. But if you look at the right side and if you look at the left side coming down, you can see that the limit or the y values are approaching one. So we're going to go ahead with that from the TI-84 
and say that the limit as h approaches 0 of e to the h minus 1 over h is 1. So now I have limit as h approaches 0 of e to the x times 1. And that is just e to the x. The same answer I got up top, but that's the reason why. Okay, let's move down to number 2. y equals the natural log of x. Okay, now we know from formula number 2 yesterday that the derivative of the ln of u is 1 over u times du dx. So that would be 1 over x times 1. But why? Why is the derivative of the ln of x equal to 1 over x? All right, here's what this proof looks like. First, I'm going to start by rewriting the natural log of x as log base e of x because the natural log is log base e. Now I'm going to use logarithmic rules to take this out of logarithmic form and put it into exponential form. So I'm going to write this as e raised to the y power equals x. You probably remember this from Algebra 2. e to the y equals x. Because I know how to find the derivative of e to the y, I'm going to implicitly differentiate this with respect to x. So here we go. Implicitly differentiating, the derivative of e to the y is e to the y times the derivative of y, which is 1, and then I tack on dy dx because it's implicit. And the reason I know that the derivative of e to the y is itself is because up here the derivative of e to the x was itself. Equals the derivative of x is just 1. Solving for dy dx, I'm going to divide both sides by e to the y. To cross this out and give me dy dx equals 1 over e to the y, which equals 1 over e to the y is x. So I'm going to replace e to the y with x, and you can see, same answer. Okay, I'm actually going to move across here to number 4 next. We're going to take the derivative of y equals a to the x. A is a constant. This one is almost like example, well, no, it's very much like example um, 9 from yesterday, that special case we did. In order to settle this proof, we're going to actually natural log both sides. So I'm going to take the natural log of y and set it equal to the natural log of a to the x. Using that logarithmic rule from yesterday, this guy can come down to the front now. So that gives me natural log of y equals x times the natural log of a. Now I'm going to implicitly differentiate both sides of this equation. And on the right side, I'm going to use the product rule. This will be my u and my v. Okay, now the derivative of the natural log of y. Well, if the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, then the derivative of the natural log of y is 1 over y tack on dy dx. The product rule, okay, well, the first, x, times the derivative of the second. Now, the derivative of the natural log of a, well, if the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, and the derivative of the natural log of y is 1 over y, then I'm thinking the derivative of the natural log of a will be 1 over a times the derivative of a, and a is a constant, so times 0. Now the reason you don't have the 0 on these guys over here is because the derivative of x is 1, so this is like times 1, and the derivative of y is 1, so that's why those don't have a 0, but the a has a 0 because of a being a constant. So first, derivative of second, plus second times the derivative of the first, which is 1. So cleaning this up, I've got 1 over y dy dx equals, this whole thing here is going to go to 0, so I'm just left with the natural log of a times 1, which is the natural log of a. Solving for dy dx, I'm going to multiply both sides of this by y, so dy dx equals y times the natural log of a. And since y up here 
is equal to a to the x, I'm going to replace this y with a to the x natural log of a, which is formula number four from the front page. So that's telling me that the derivative of a to the u is a to the u natural log of a times the derivative of u, which in this case would be one. You could put the one on there or you don't have to. All right, last but not least, number three. This is going to be the proof of number three from yesterday's formula page. And I'm going to start the derivative here by rewriting this logarithm in its exponential form. So I'm going to take a to the y and set it equal to x. So a to the y equals x. I am going to find the ln of both sides. So the natural log of a to the y equals the natural log of x. I'm going to bring this y to the front. y times the natural log of a equals the natural log of x. And now I am going to implicitly differentiate both sides. Over here, I'm going to have to use the product rule. So using the product rule, I've got the first times the derivative of the second. The derivative of the natural log of a is 1 over a times the derivative of a, the constant, which we'll call 0. So first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is 1 dy dx. And this equals the derivative of the natural log of x, which earlier we proved was 1 over x. So this whole thing here is going to go to 0, leaves me with ln of a dy dx equals 1 over x. To solve for dy dx, I'm going to divide both sides by the natural log of a, which gives me dy dx equals 1 over x ln of a. And that comes out that way because if I take this divided by this, it would look like 1 over x divided by natural log of a, which is 1 over x times 1 over the natural log of a, which simplifies to this. And if you look at the number 3 formula on your formula sheet, it says that the derivative of the log base a of u is 1 over u natural log a times the derivative of u, which in this case would just be 1. So that's proving that formula. So there are your four proofs. If you are a y person, now you know that those four formulas I gave you yesterday are not coming out of nowhere. They're not coming out of thin air. They all have a real place of origin. And by going back to your Algebra 2 roots, you can get through those proofs. Okay, see you next time.